Renaissance man, a person who strives to maintain multiple disciplines in an attempt to become as well-rounded a person one reasonably can. Juggling multiple endeavors while trying to be the best you you can be for yourself and others is the goal for many people. Notable examples like Noam Chomsky, Bruce Dickinson, and Brian May all have varying degrees of skills in different departments. However, these Renaissance men belong to different eras, places, and times. Who's a Renaissance man that belongs almost solely to the internet era? Neil Cesarega is undoubtedly the internet's most well-known renaissance man. He's a musician, puppeteer, artist, animator, filmmaker, actor, YouTuber, singer, songwriter, game developer, and most importantly, a good-looking dude. The variety of work he has done is astonishing. From his band Lemon Demon to Potter Puppet Pails, this renaissance man is looking to do it all. But it all had to start somewhere, right? One of Neil's first forays into the visual and audio arts was coincidentally flash animation. Neil has created 30 plus flash animations and is one of the pioneers of an animation subgenre called Animutation. For Flash Summer 2022, let's take an in depth look at Neil Cicerega's roots in flash animation. Neil Cicerega abruptly materialized on the planet Earth on August 23, 1986 in Boston, Massachusetts. Neil was fortunate enough to have a father who was a programmer in the 90s, which gave him access to computers before their inevitable ubiquity in our daily life. Neil was unsurprisingly precocious, developing amateur video games in the user-friendly game development software Click and Play in elementary school. Neil would later be homeschooled, which afforded him the time and freedom to explore many different avenues using a computer, and most importantly, the internet. Uh, after fourth grade, my parents decided to homeschool me, and my brother, and my little sister. Uh, not for religious reasons, and not because we were like having trouble in school or anything, but because... I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think my parents just wanted to try something different, and my mom claims that she missed us during the day. But I know the real reason. <laughs> Who else was famously homeschooled in 1997? <laughs> my parents wanted that mbop money. This led to a young Neil finding his way to music production, specifically learning older MIDI tracker programs. He would create music under the moniker Trapezoid, uploading his works to places like mp3.com and Newgrounds. Neil's blossoming interest in music would lead him to his first forays into flash animation. One of Neil's friends at the time showed him a Japanese Pokemon music CD. The music was bizarre, but very different from what was contemporaneous at the time. Neil felt compelled to take these songs and make crude music videos of them. Little did he know, he would be the pioneer in the web animation subgenre, Animutation. Animutations are the style of flash animation Neil Cicerega helped to popularize. Animutations are effectively random montages of images set to music, oftentimes being foreign music with a high BPM or erratic style. If I had to compare them to something, animutations are like the manual collage animations that Terry Gilliam would do for Monty Python. Animutations have a little less intentionality than those, as they take random pop culture images and other random stuff into a montage. Animutations are unpredictable, and they tend to forego form and structure altogether, sort of like the Dadaist art movement. Neil is often miscredited for creating animutations. The first animutation was created all the way back in 1999, being uploaded to Newgrounds under the title Copyright Infringement. This first animutation is an arguably a pastiche of Terry Gilliam's Monty Python bits. The creator fragrantly admits so here. This first animutation would familiarize ourselves with characters that would come to define the genre. It doesn't have the same energy of Neil's subsequent works, but the inspiration for them can be easily traced to this moment. The next year, more animutations would manifest from another creator named Vekens Hot. Unfortunately, not much is known about either of these foundational creators. What we do know is that Vekens Hot animutations added one crucial element into the genre's canon, fake and misheard lyrics. These three animutations feature songs sung in Arabic, only to be translated into the most convoluted pig Latin you've ever read. They might as well have been translated into Zalgo. Neil would end up borrowing these ideas when creating his first animutation, the Japanese Pokey Rap. Neil's first animutation featured Mike Brady, Bill Nye, 
this weird green 50s clip art guy, Krusty Hulk Hogan, Hamburglar, and none other than Colin Mochran all vibing to the Japanese version of the Pokey Rap song. Compared to what comes next in his catalog, this is beyond crude and rudimentary. Most of it happens on a white background with little to no motion. Most of the work went into sinking Mike Brady's jaw to the song. Thankfully, what came next is very different. The second, and frankly, most well-known animutation created by Neil was Hyakugo Juichi. This animutation features more animation of disparate elements singing an ED from the Japanese version of the Pokemon anime. Japanese Poke Rap and Hyakugo Juichi were made within a day of each other. So it leads me to believe that Japanese Poke Rap was more of a warm-up for what would become the most influential animutation. It's like viewing one of the first shit posts in a hypothetical internet museum. It features JJ the Jet Plane, Colin Mochran of course, Pee Wee Herman, Harry Potter, Chris Benoit, oh god, Darth Maul, among many other weird inclusions. On top of all this, Neil incorporates misheard lyrics from a foreign song to add to all the strangeness. In the pantheon of internet classics, Hyakugo Juichi is a contender for top 10 videos, especially if we were to separate it into a pre-2010 era category. This animutation classic suddenly exploded in popularity through forum posts and email chains, which caused Neil's website animutation.com to crash. It got so popular that journalists Catherine Mizokowski and Amy Standen reached out to Neil in 2001 to talk about it. Their curiosity led them to find something stranger than Hyakugo Juichi. They found Neil Cicerega himself to be an astonishing and precocious 14-year-old. Oh, how little did they know what the future would hold. Because in 2001, this was newsworthy. <laughs> 2001 would be the year of animations for Neil, as he would produce a couple more that would go on to be classics in their own right. It would only get weirder but more ambitious from here. One animation to make note of is Do the Mario. Do the Mario, take one step, and then again, let's do the Mario all together now! Which itself would become somewhat of a reoccurring meme at several points in the future of the internet. Do the Mario was already a dumb and catchy earworm. This animation would be an early look into what people would do with the song later in YouTube poop, meme edits, and dub overs. I'm the Mario, eat your arms, and then again, go on, go on, go on, do the Mario, I am God, and then you know, come on, it's time to go, eat the Dario, do the Mario, swing your arms from side to side, come on, it's time to go, do the Mario, take one step, and then again, let's do the Mario all together now. Neil was helping to further popularize animutations and institutionalized iconography that would become reoccurring. Teletubbies, Hitler, Colin Mochran, and this weird-ass 3D head of a Scotsman would not only find itself in Neil's subsequent animutations, but from other animutators as well. After the first few entries created by Neil, this sparked a creative movement centered around animutations on Newgrounds and Albino Black Sheep. In 2002 and 2003, Neil would continue to hone his craft and define the genre he carved out with more complex and interesting animutations. Neil would cap off his animutation career with Wizard Power, which is such a far cry from animutation's origins. While the early animutations have their charm and place in history, Wizard Power stands the test of time because it isn't too far off from something like YTPMV. Wizard Power stands the test of time because it's not far off from something like a YouTube poop music video. The kinetic energy of the editing in this animation isn't too far off from something as recent as the Octagon of Destiny. It goes without saying that Neil invariably inspired the medium through animutations. YouTube Poop and animutations share a similar energy when it comes to remixing media. And believe it or not, they cropped up around the same time. YouTube Poops, or proto YouTube Poops, actually started around 1998. Although the earliest one that we can actually watch is from 2001, called Cow and Chicken Go Stupid by tank to tank It's no mistake that people were doing these at the same time. Editing software and flash animation tools became more available for home computers. There is a cross-section between these two, and Neil's popularization of animations would permeate the minds of YTP creators, directly and indirectly. In short, animation and Neil's contributions to it developed future remix mediums through cultural osmosis. Neil would, in some form, eventually revisit animation down the line. But what's next is completely different.
If Neil's catalog wasn't impressive enough for you, you should know that he's the creator of the Ultimate Showdown (parentheses) of Ultimate Destiny, perhaps one of the most beloved Flash animations of all time. Although he wasn't the animator, he produced the titular track under his famous music pseudonym, Lemon Demon. Lemon Demon are more well-known today, but his indie rock and novelty music works were more obscure than his animutations at the time. The Ultimate Showdown features every pop culture reference possible, all duking it out to some sick bars. It starts with Godzilla starting the fight, but Mr. Rogers ending it. It's a sight to behold even today. The amount of obnoxious pop culture ephemera and references strung seamlessly together sends my sides into orbit. Speaking of sending sides into orbit, the Wikipedia plot summary for this video might be more humorous than the original itself. It's written so formally, as it normally would be for Wikipedia. So much so that it comes off as a shitpost. As Godzilla is going on a rampage through Tokyo, Batman suddenly hits him with a bat grenade. As Godzilla attacks his new foe, Shaquille O'Neal and Aaron Carter join the fight, but are run over by the Batmobile. Unfortunately, before Batman can return to the Batcave, Abraham Lincoln rises from the dead and shoots Batman with an AK-47. Lincoln is then forced to flee by Optimus Prime. After Godzilla kills Optimus Prime, O'Neal returns covered in a tire track. I'm not sure why that's in quotations, because Batman does just hit Shaquille O'Neal with the Batmobile. I don't know why that's like, it quote, okay, whatever. But is then attacked by Jackie Chan. Meanwhile, Lincoln attempts to finish off Batman with a machete, but is stopped by Indiana Jones. However, Jones is left defenseless against Godzilla as Batman steals his gun and unsuccessfully attempts to kill Chan. A somersaulting Chan and a pole vaulting Lincoln then collide in the air and are killed by a Care Bear stare. This is only half the summary on the page, I'm not going to read it all. While it's pinpoint accurate, it doesn't paint the imagery as well as the Flash animation does. This little diagram on the side showcasing Abraham Lincoln and Benito Mussolini is really the cherry on top. The 2006 animation had that charming amateuristic quality about it that wowed many internet denizens back in the day. The cartoony bodies with realistic or accurate faces are such an important element that elevated the humor. It gives so much credence to their pop culture and historical counterparts. While Neil had little to do with the actual animation, Ultimate Showdown elevated Lemon Demon and emboldened Neil Cicerega's musical adventures. Lemon Demon would be Neil's baby to protect, and his output with this project would continue from this point on putting out a few more studio albums after the success of Ultimate Showdown in 2005. With regards to his viral internet hits, a Lemon Demon song wouldn't see cultural ubiquity again until 2010. Since its debut, the Ultimate Showdown has been covered, both in song and animation. Regardless of Neil's absence in the animation department, the Ultimate Showdown of Ultimate Destiny, in all its novelty, is an all-time internet classic. Thankfully, Neil would get to improve and show off his Flash animation shops in this next magical focused project. When discussing early 2000s pop culture, the focus of the conversation will inevitably shift towards Harry Potter. The books were fixtures of young adult fiction for so long, not to mention the box office juggernaut that the films became, which further contributed to Harry Potter's ubiquity during this time. Harry Potter's wizarding world casted a spell upon everyone, and Neil Cicerega would not be impervious to its sorcery. In 2003, Neil and some friends would conceive of Potter Puppet Pals, a series of Flash animations parodying the series with a faux puppet show based on the comics from Neil's sister Emma. The premise of Potter Puppet Pals, in the creator's words, is this. What if Harry Potter was a puppet show, performed by the insane? <laughs> Yeah, I think that's uh, very accurate. Potter Puppet Pals twists these characters into something demented and puts them in scenarios that wouldn't be conceivable in the source material. The only episodes animated in Flash are the first two and a half from 2003. The series would continue as an actual puppet show three years later, still being headed by Neil Cicerega. This iteration would prove to be much more popular, as it was uploaded to YouTube with more episodes produced. For the sake of this video, I'll be focusing on the Flash iteration of the series. The first episode introduces Harry and Ron, who set off to incessantly bother Snape. Deeply angered and annoyed by the boys' onslaught of harassment, Snape would fucking murder them. Dumbledore later shows up to see the boys lying dead on the ground, naively assuming that they're just napping. Dumbledore picks the pockets of the boys while Snape sneaks away. Once Dumbledore is alone, he takes off all his clothes. That's just the first episode. Neil, hot off of creating animations, 
would be challenged by the animation process for pot or puppet pails. Animutations, while taking effort, mostly used prefabricated assets. At most, he would draw the effects or mouths used in some of the animutations. For pot or puppet pails, he would need to draw and rig up facsimiles of puppets. Not only that, he would have to animate them as well. Instead of keyframing prefabricated elements to do nonsensical motions and sync to music, he would have to emulate the physics of puppetry in a somewhat believable way. Unsurprisingly, Neil would do a fantastic job on his first go, creating believable motion that helped to elevate the humor present in the series. For Neil to make something look and move this good in 2003 on his first try is an achievement all its own. This invariably led to Potter Puppet Pals being featured on the front page the very next day after its initial upload. It received rave reviews from Newgrounds users, and would end up accumulating hundreds of thousands of views within the first year of its upload. The second episode would arrive only a few months later, this time with improved animation and details on the characters. The second episode of Potter Puppet Pals would be more ambitious, introducing characters like Hermione and Voldemort. Voldemort is attacking Hogwarts, and Snape tries to defeat him with the spell he used to kill the boys in the first episode. Snape unfortunately fails and gets killed. Facing dire straits, Ron hatches an ingenious plan. Play hide and seek with him, only to blindside him with this. Where are you? We're over here. Well, here I come. Wait, we're a little more to the right. Here? here? Almost. That's right. I don't see anybody here. Okay, ready? Shoot him! After defeating Voldemort, Snape reappears. Snape's confused, Dumbledore is naked, and the Gryffindors are having a cornucopia of love. The machine gun gag destroys my brain. I love it every time I see it. It's one of the funniest things Neil has ever done. This would mark the end of Potter Puppet Pals as a Flash animated series, and the subsequent live-action puppet show would take its place years later. With a higher upload frequency, the actual puppet show would have a more profound effect on internet culture. What came next wasn't an established pop culture phenomenon to parody, but an intrusive thought that plagued Neil's mind. Neil would eventually return to Animutations in some form with Brody Quest, another internet fixture that went on to spawn a slew of variations through memes. Brody Quest is a little ditty about the typical day-to-day -day activities of American actor Adrian Brody. These activities include going for a walk in his neighborhood, exploring the depths of the ocean, freely scaling a mountain without proper gear, and most importantly, effortlessly ascending into space to play his famous Golden Star guitar. The Lemon Demon track is a simplistic electronic beat, often broke up with a melody featuring a robotic voice repeating the actor's name. Currently sitting at 11 million views on Neil C's channel, it stands as one of the all-time classic internet video. The catchy song, the absurdity of the premise, the picture of Adrian Brody he used, the guitar at the end, it's just a perfect blend of absurdity and charm all coming together into one fun package. An under-examined aspect of Brody Quest is its simplicity. It's not hard to recreate at all. Brody Quest became a perfect meme template for almost anything, just replace Adrian Brody with any character or thing you desire. Like mentioned previously, this would be Neil's return to Animutation. However, this is considerably much more reserved and structural than his early output. This video technically isn't a Flash animation, but I'm counting it since it evokes the same ethos as Animutation. Animutations, while fun and charming, quickly faded into obscurity. Brody Quest is essentially a music video for Lemon Demon, Neil's creative centerpiece at the time. Weirdly enough, it was conceived out of a need to redesign Neil's YouTube channel to match the aesthetics of the 90s board game Dream Phone. In a 2010 interview with Screen.com, Neil had this to say on the process. 
I had just redesigned my YouTube channel to redesign the box art for the early 90s hormone blossoming board game Dream Phone, and I needed a colorful video with a dreamy boy to match it. For some reason, the word Brody Quest got stuck in my mind. The word came first. And the beginning of the video is just what I assumed a video called Brody Quest would contain. Originally it was going to be very repetitive, not really going anywhere. And it would have been uploaded to an alternate channel as not to upset my fans. But as I worked on it, I realized it was amaterial, and I gradually started increasing the scope of the music and the voyage. Soon I just knew I had to bust out the After Effects and vocoders. Basically, it willed itself into existence using me as a mere vessel. The rest of this interview is really funny. It's unfortunate that you can only find it on the Wayback Machine. Here's another goofy snippet. Given five minutes alone with Adrian Brody, what would you want to discuss with him? I guess I've always wanted to know what he thinks about cryptozoology. Does Adrian Brody believe in the Jersey Devil? If you could sleep atop Brody, what would you want to use for a pillow? His barrel chest or his trademark nose? Chest. And the nose would make a fine nightlight. That's, uh, that's horribly insulting. Evidently, this video and trend wouldn't bother the famous actor. Joy of seeing yourself sort of manipulated and turned into a meme online? If that's the extent of the manipulation, I enjoy it. Brody Quest serves as a symbol of Neil C's creative progress, allowing himself to be cemented as a true creative pioneer on the internet. As the story goes, Neil continued to make banger after another, charming millions with his unique and trailblazing creativity. Brody Quest would go on to further embolden Neil C's work on Lemon Demon, but may have also helped to inspire his mashup comedy records that he would become known for in the mid to late 2000s. <laughs> Everything up to this point in the video is just me rattling off accomplishments from Neil, but what is shared among all these feats is the unprecedented creativity Neil demonstrates. Whether it was his own music or any mutations, Neil seemed to always be a step ahead, becoming a trailblazer in internet culture. Any mutations feel the need to get more creative and ambitious with remixing media. Ultimate Showdown illustrated a new way to market music while showcasing the medium of flash animation to millions in the mainstream. Potter Puppet Pals capitalized on the Potter craze in the early 2000s, and is unmistakably one of the first flash animated parodies of any media. Brody Quest was one of the first meme formulas besides image macros that were very malleable, helping to set a standard for memes of its ilk later down the line. Neil C is inarguably one of the most influential people on the internet, even if we just go off of these examples I've covered in this video. That doesn't even cover the myriad of other influential projects he's worked on. It's obvious that Neil was a precocious kid, but that doesn't go without saying that the conditions that afforded him his creativity shouldn't go unnoticed. Neil was lucky enough to have a family of interesting individuals and creatives that helped to feel his lust for the creative arts. Just having free access to a computer and the internet in the 90s with all of these new and exciting tools can push a young mind to learn quickly about art. Neil's father, being a programmer, knew firsthand all about the potential for technology. Giving Neil unfettered access to all of this technology and giving him enough trust to do it for the right reasons is something many of us wish we had. Even though I am nowhere near as talented as Neil, I similarly had a computer with video equipment at an early age. I wasn't homeschooled and I didn't have all the time to do it, but nonetheless, I had it before everyone else. If I didn't have any of this and the freedom to use it, I don't think I would have accomplished a quarter of the things I've done in my life so far. Neil was fortunate to have what he had. If you, the viewer, choose to have kids, I encourage you to push them to use technology in a way that pushes them to be better. Technology can make things convenient and easy, but its real utility shines when the human element amplifies it. Viewing all Neil's early Flash and Flash-adjacent works in retrospect, I feel vindicated. Like Neil, I wish to pursue many different mediums and explore my creative potential, pushing myself to greater heights. I myself strive to be a renaissance man, and going through these animations, animutations, and puppet shows filled my creative gas tank. While Neil is skilled and talented in unbelievable ways, he embodies the spirit of creative freedom that only the internet can amplify. He started with bizarre montage animations in his teens to creating some of the most influential and popular memes on the internet. While the internet is bigger and more intimidating today, we should all learn by Neil's example. The villagers of Little Hangleton still call it the Riddle House, even though it had been many years since the Riddle family had lived there. It stood on a hill overlooking the village. Some of its windows boarded- I'm not doing this, this is stupid. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the video. Uh, my cat got in the actual conclusion part of the video, 
So I bribed him to come back up here because it would look visually consistent. I bribed him with kibble. He's eating kibble. Uh, also, this uh, I'm glad I got to talk about Neil C. Because uh, he likes Harry Potter. And Harry Potter is my favorite thing. Uh, my favorite book is Harry Potter and the Bucking Wizard. Yeah, um, if you like this video, please give it a like, share it, comment. Comment on it, please. Thanks. Uh, and also go read Harry Potter because everybody likes Harry Potter. Isn't that right, Dustry? You stinky magey boy.